everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. So today's video is going to be my entry for the Sewing Prints and Planes Challenge which is being run currently by Voice of a Creative, Sewn on the Time and Samantha of I can't remember the hashtag, I am so sorry. I will put it down below here. And this is a monthly sewing challenge that is happening, I believe, throughout two, what, 2019. And it started at the beginning of February and this month's challenge is Sewing Floral February. So for those of you that watched my plans video for February, you will know that I said I plan to make this Vogue pattern, which is a Tracy Reese pattern it is V1379 so this is the pattern here if I bring it in so you hopefully that will focus and you can see it a little bit better and it is this beautiful beautiful flowy dress with double splits at the front and um, it's got a panel bodice the, the skirts paneled as well it's got hidden pockets in the front seams as well I'll just show you the back line drawings you can see there and it has little tabs at the front as well and it has a d it has a ring in the middle now let's just wait while i come back into focus there we go i'm back into focus okay so i had planned to make this dress out of this beautiful beautiful lightweight crepe back satin by John Caldor that I got from the textile center a few months ago and I'm not sure if they've still got it but if they have I will put a little link to it down in the description box below and I plan to make this dress as part of my February makes anyway and when I saw this challenge I thought you know what I'm going to enter this dress into this challenge now I will step back so you can have a closer look at the finished dress so just bear with me okay so this is the dress here and yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. I just think it's so beautiful and so lovely. Um, this, these splits, I don't know if you can see them, do come quite high. I'll stand up a little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm just gonna sit down again. I'm going to um, take some pictures outside so that you can have a bit of a better look at the dress. Now, um, what can I tell you about this dress? Now, this fabric, as you can see, is a really flowy, fabric and there was just no way I was going to be able to sew this dress together unless I stabilized this fabric and I always do this with um, with tricky to sew fabrics because it shifted about so much um, I cut it out on my cutting mat and with my rotary cutter but even so I knew that if I didn't stabilize the fabric it was just going to be a nightmare so I use some spray starch um, you can get it at most of your sort of DIY stores, um, department stores, like those kinds of places. And um, that worked really well just to stabilise my um, pieces once I'd cut it out um, before I actually sewed it all together. This dress is not a beginner pattern. Um, if you have not sewn with tricky fabrics before or you're fairly a beginner and have not sewn much advanced patterns I would say this is an advanced pattern now Vogue usually do a um, yeah they do they, they give you a, an indication of whether a pattern is easy or not and look at this on the back it says it's easy it's not easy Right, before we go into the construction details, I'll tell you a little bit more about the dress itself. Now, it does have a, light, a camisole with it that is supposed to be stitched in, because if you look underneath here, there's gonna be an obligatory bar shot now, I'm really sorry about this. Um, you can see, oh, actually you can't, but when your arms are down, you can see your underwear. So the um, plan is that you're supposed to make a little camisole to wear underneath it as well, that is actually stitched to the bodice now I didn't do that because I just thought do you know what I want to make this a bit easier for myself and I've got loads of camisoles that I can wear underneath it so this fabric isn't see-through but obviously if you wore if you have 
if you do make this dress in a see-through fabric it is you know you're going to need something underneath it but um but yeah i've got plenty of camisole so i cut that part out but even so without the camisole this dress has loads of pattern pieces i didn't realize that when i first decided that i was going to make it but without the camisole how many camisole pieces have you got? One, two, three. There are four pieces for the camisole and there are 18 pattern pieces in total. So 14 pattern pieces go into making this dress. I don't class that as easy. Um, the recommended fabrics are things like crepe de chine. It says lightweight linen matte jersey. Yeah, it would be quite nice with that actually. But you do want to get the sort of drapiness so that it doesn't feel sort of bulky. Um, because of all the folds and pleats and everything else in it you do want something that's quite lightweight so um, this fabric was perfect but as I say I don't think this is an easy pattern at all now if you notice the front here I haven't put the tabs on what's supposed to happen is it's actually got a little keyhole there and you are supposed to have like a ring in the center there with two tabs that come through and then a stitch down here I put those tabs on and then I actually used a couple of buttons because I didn't realize it had a ring and I didn't have a ring so um, all I did was hand stitch in the center and I um, pulled the tabs through and then stitched a couple of buttons down on top and I did that and then looked at it and thought I don't like it I, it just didn't look right at all so what I did this morning before I finished this dress off was I, I cut the tabs off um, I just overlocked straight through at the, where, the, where the center seam is and then I hand stitched the two front seams together so you've got like a little pleating detail here and then um, yeah I'm quite happy with how that sits now um, what else can I tell you? It has a neck band. Now, the neck band goes from this panel here all the way around the back. But when I put the neck band on, it wasn't straight. I didn't like it. It just looked a mess. So I took the neck band off and I used some satin bias binding. Excuse my bra strap there. Um, and I used that as a neck band so that it sits much better. Um, the other thing that I did when I took the tabs off as well is I actually brought in the front a little bit more so I folded over the front two pieces by probably a good inch either size. I made the size 14 which according to my body measurements with this pattern is what I should have made but I found that this neckline was just huge and it was showing my bra straps, it was gaping so much at the back, it was so blousy. It is supposed to be a generous oversized fit anyway but I, I didn't like it at all it was just too big so um so yeah so by taking out that inch from either side of the front two panels it, it sits much better and I'm quite pleased with that there is lots and lots of narrow hemming of this dress you'll see from some of the pictures when I insert it and um, it's got two big slits right up the front and um yeah they um they all need to be narrow hemmed and the, the bottom hem is narrow hemmed, round the sleeves is narrow hemmed, um, oh actually sorry it's not, round the sleeves there is a, a sleeve band and um, it's got a yoke on the back, I don't know if you can see that there with gathering into it um, and um, it's got an elasticated waist, I totally messed up putting, a case, putting the casing in for the elasticated waist so I've ended up just stitching the elastic straight onto the, um, the seam on the reverse side of the dress and yeah it's fine because it's so blousy obviously it hangs over the waist, waistband and I think it looks nice. Um, the slits slits splits at the front I do think are a little bit high and um, if I can just show you I'll just come back I don't know if you can see just where my leg is there um, yeah they do come quite high my waist is here obviously my the top of my thigh is about there I don't know if you can see that actually I do think the um, the splits are quite high so I may actually just stitch those down a little bit lower um, I'll see how I feel wearing it but I think this is just a lovely a lovely spring dress um, and I'm really looking forward to wearing it. It did test me on a number of points in the pattern there's as I say there's lots and lots of narrow hemming and in this shifty fabric that was quite a challenge 
Um, there was a couple of bits that I didn't really understand how you were supposed to do it. The pockets, the pockets are, if I just stand back and show you. This dress, this dress has got pockets, but the pockets are actually in this seam here. So you have, there's no side seam to the dress. You've got a piece that fits around here, two pieces at the, no, one piece at the front, piece that sits around here, and then a back piece on the skirt and the pockets fit inside this seam here, um, a, a little way down from the waist, and yeah, if I've got my hands in them there so you can have a look, but um, to be honest, I'm not sure what purpose they serve. They're a little bit small. I don't, I'm, I've got quite big hands to be fair. I think if you had small hands, it would probably be okay, but I can't see me putting my hands in my pockets because it's just gonna pull the dress down. Um, so yeah, I probably if I was going to make it again, I probably wouldn't bother with the pockets. But um, but yeah, I think it's a really pretty dress, and I feel really feminine in it. And particularly at the moment when I am heavier than I'd like to be, I think um, this kind of dress where it's loose and flowy and um, gives room for extra dinner, extra pudding, that kind of thing is is going to be very much welcome. So covers lots of lumps and bumps. Um, yeah, so what else can I tell you about it? Yes, French seams. This dress has every seam French seamed inside. If you follow the instructions closely, then it does all make sense and you will be able to, um, you will be able to construct it as it says. I fudged up a little bit with the, um, attaching the yoke to the gathered back piece where it, that's supposed to be French themed and I put it on the wrong way so I ended up overlocking it. But apart from that, every other seam inside this dress is French themed or narrow hemmed. Um, and um, yeah, so what I would say about these patterns is they do use lots of couture techniques inside if you can class French themes as a couture technique. Um, but it does mean that you end up with a garment that's really well constructed and looks just as pretty on the inside as it does on the outside. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert some footage of me wearing the dress outside. I've been waiting all day to try and film this video because it's it's been a really warm February. Well, the last week in the UK has been quite warm and we're having a bit of a heat wave for February. When we don't normally get these kinds of temperatures. And um, But however, in Yorkshire today, it's Sunday afternoon. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm the, the sun is just coming out, it's been foggy all morning and I've been waiting for the sun to come out so that I could get outside and film um, film this dress for you but, um, but yeah, the sun is only just coming out now so um, yeah, so I'm going to insert some footage of me wearing the dress so that you can have a look at it, how it moves, that kind of thing um, and yeah, go and have a look at the challenge. I'll leave the details of the challenge down below. It runs till the end of February, and essentially it is just about making a dress, or well, it's not even a dress, it can be anything, um, out of a floral fabric. And I love floral fabrics, so it's worked perfect for me. So, um, so yeah, so this is my entry into that challenge. Hope you like it, and um, I will be back with you all really soon. Bye-bye.